man. It's good to be here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> We're both in person today. Both in person. Back with another episode of the Foamy Heads. Drinking one beer today. Yep. Yep. Mitch and Rich sitting here on the mics holding the newest Living Waters. I love this beer they do. This is the uh, third version. Yeah, Highgate, right? The Highgate. It's a experimental series. Mm -hmm. Experimental hop series. They started out with the Highgate 1701A uh, using Citra and HBC 472. And I think on, we'll have to go back and, and listen to one of the earlier episodes, but the HBC hops yes. uh, was a, quite an interesting story when we were interviewing with the guys at Living Waters. But Highgate 1701A mm. was the first one, had HBC 472 and Citra hops. 1701B yes. was the second installment that had Sabro and Citra. I'm starting to see a, um, I'm starting to see a trend, and craft breweries are starting to do this, where they're they're taking an IPA or they're taking a beer, and they're creating a series out of it and doing mm. like experimental hops with it. Yeah. And I love that. I just want to know, I'm not on the end on knowing when there's a new hop available for people to put their mitts on. You mm. know, it's like, it, it's interesting that this is just, uh, you never know with these experimental beers where they're getting this hop and all that. So I know their story behind it. Yeah. But, uh, even the for this newest version, he mentioned, uh, or they've mentioned in the description that it's, super rare or yeah. very rare and very new so i'm i'm just blown away by the and how they find these yeah yeah that's maybe that's i see what you're asking now it's right. like how in the world do people come up with these because you know they they just I'm, I'm literally looking at living waters website right now where it's talking about the the new hop they're using nz9099 <laughs> the new hop variety from the new zealand region yeah. only grown by three farmers and they literally say it's so rare that they've that approximately more than 33 times the amount of citra hops was produced than the amount of hops of NZ9099. Like, it's small. Yeah, it's crazy. And I don't understand how people find these or how they come up with or how how they even create their own because that's what a lot of these guys are doing is they're just blending together and they're mm -hmm. coming up with their own hop varieties. Yeah, and I, I had this on tap earlier or off the tap earlier and it was delicious you were at living waters i was oh and, you know i i just it's interesting especially with living waters and their experiment experimental series with this limited hop mm -hmm. that you can't really put your hands on because it's such a small amount or variety whatever it's similar to how they also source their coffee beans mm -hmm. so they always want the single origin and work with the people who grow it so you know it's a i appreciate this beer even more so for that fact they took that same thought process and moved it from coffee and they replicated it mm. onto the beer side they wanted to make sure that they're only working with mm -hmm. small groups of people and that they're not mass producing and mass sourced and things like that it creates a more unique and interesting experience because you're dealing with something so so custom and so rare that that actually accentuates what is the craft beer community yeah. it's not this macro world of just you know let's who cares what kind of hop it is just throw it in there <laughs> right it's a it's literally the definition of what craft beer is supposed to be we know what works good and that's what you stick with but that's experimental stuff is i uh, i super appreciate the work yeah. that goes into it it's almost the meta of the craft beer mm -hmm. world right yeah <laughs> it's kind of it's one of the metas yeah it's weird but i sound incredibly hipster right now I feel like. <laughs> but you know i just appreciate the work going into it absolutely so again let's just we'll run down it real quick and then let's let's pop into it but highgate series from living water seven and a half percent abv um has nz9099 hops put into it and i guess let's jump in and, and pop yeah. it open i'm, I'm ready to taste this uh new Varietal hop from the Tapawera and Mokir regions of New Zealand. I probably butchered those words because I'm from the South. <laughs> <laughs> when the United States, however you say it, is the correct way to say it. That's so, right. Because that's what makes you an American. It doesn't matter if it's the right <laughs> way, it's whether you think you're right or not. <laughs> oh, dude. This smells great. Look at that 
head retention. Oh my god. So just just looking at it, there's there's a great amount of foamy head. It's it, look at that. Ours are basically almost the same. Yeah. When we poured it in, that that head is staying with the beer. It's just the right amount. I love the fact that it is, I can hear my kid crying in the background. <laughs> I love the fact that it's staying like that. That's a good source of um, just talking with, when we were talking with Ryan at Living Waters and he was talking about head retention, the, the protein content of the beer plays a big factor in head retention of a beer. So the fact that that foamy head is just staying around means it's healthy and that it's um, it's, it's got a good amount of protein in it for the beer. And so that's what I like the smell, the nose. Oh yeah, dude. I can, it's the second you open the can, you it can was smell just like, it. Ooh, aroma. Uh huh. <laughs> We're not really that close to the beer either. The minute you popped it open, you can smell it. And that thing, it, it, it travels. I love that. Um, I, I'm just very bright. Um, almost. There's a little bit of dankness on the end. Yeah. It just it's it's the 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 flavor profile, just the smell. It smells very bright. It smells a little bit dank. It smells juicy, but it's very New England style. Like you can definitely tell this is a New England IPA. Yeah. I'm excited to get back into it from the can. Mm. Man, uh, it looks absolutely beautiful in these Tika glasses, by the way. Yes. Good job, Living Waters, on presentation. This beer looks great. It's uh, it's hazy, it's foggy, but it's not dirty. Like there's no, um, <clears throat> there's no floaties in it. I mean, it's it's something that they definitely, they definitely took their time with as they were filtering and creating this beer. It's a it's a clean haze. <laughs> clean haze. It's a morning fog. <laughs> morning fog. <laughs> it it looks absolutely pillowy. So uh, let's get into it. Let's jump in. Mm. Oh man, that tastes really good. It's got a pop, yeah, like a, a nice citrusy pop to it. Yeah, it's very clean tasting. Mm. Um, wow, I'd it's expect sweet. that from like a clear beer, <laughs> but this is a hazy. Yeah, um, I like. Uh, I can't even put my hand on what I think this tastes like. It, I. I I hate to be, I hate to sound stupid and just say it, it sounds, it tastes sweet and it tastes clean, but that's exactly what it is. There's a ton of aroma um, on the smell as I'm drinking it and that carries through to the taste. It's, it's sweet, it's juicy, but it's not like orange juicy. It's like, yeah, Southern almost, um, God, I can't put my finger on it. It's a... Uh... I feel like I'm not doing it justice, <laughs> but I really like this beer. It makes me think of a orange juice with pineapple. <laughs> it's kind of a... Uh, pineapple, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can taste pineapple. I can taste orange. I'm curious. Yeah, it's like a... I'm going to lean towards the citrus side of things, <clears throat> and the orange is, I think, spot on, because if you eat a orange, it's like that rind bitterness that's, you know... The membrane kind of taste mm -hmm. kind of sticks with you. Um, I get that. Mandarin orange, maybe. It says, okay, so literally pulling up on Living Water's site, experimental New England style IPA, 7.5%. We knew that already. We talked about that. Lots of orange, lemon, and lime in a combo oh. that would make Sprite or Mellow Yellow jealous. I like that. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Living Water's, I agree. I would take this over a Mellow Yellow any day of yes, the week. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Clean, bitter finish and a juicy mouthfeel. Well, that kind of summarized what we were going through the motions of. Uh, the lemon and lime is curious to me. Mm -hmm. I, I do taste citrus. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, orange for sure. Definitely. I get the orange out of it. Um, I get the, <clears throat> the clean finish, juicy mouthfeel. I get that. It almost stays with you. It coats your mouth. Mm a little bit after you finish the sip it stays with you you kind of get that leftover almost like a mandarin orange taste mm -hmm. that stays with you and that juicy mouthfeel just stays on on it coats the entire part of your mouth yeah after you drink it that's almost it almost reminds me of uh i mean 
Bearded Iris is known for having that weird palette you get. It's fuzzy afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, it's their, I don't know what part of their process it is, but this is leaning in that direction for me where it, it's coating my mouth and I get that leftover fuzzy mouth feel mm -hmm. from it. And, uh, but what's weird is it's so clean of a haze that I didn't expect to have any of those lingering tastes. So is that the new hop doing that, I wonder, or what? I, it could be. It could be the, the citra itself. Um, mm. So I love citra hops, and that's just my that's my favorite go-to. And this one has citra hops in addition to the, the NZ9099. I get tired of saying that, but it's such a long hop name. But it's got citra hops in it as well. And the citra is what has that clean, mm. um, super bright, super fresh taste to it. I don't. I think citra hops kind of lingered just a little bit on the end. I think where I'm getting something different than the citra is that that orangish taste mm. on the end. That's almost like tropical, um, and that's something that I'm not used to getting very much of with citra hops because citra hops taste really well. But for me personally, they've always dissipated really quickly at the end. Interesting. Okay. Damn. Mm. It, it's good through and through. Yeah. I mean, I'm absolutely smashing through mine yeah <laughs> i've already poured the rest of the can into my glass and i'm already halfway through the glass again like it's already it's already done mm -hmm. like, <laughs> it's it's super good and i i wish i could i don't want to compare it yeah. against the previous high gates because yeah. it's literally like they're not designed i don't think ryan might you know could maybe he would sit here and contest this but I don't think they're designed to build off the previous version. I don't think it's supposed to be like, oh, let's make a better version of the previous one. It's let's take a base IPA and let's just use experimental hop series. Like mm -hmm. that's the whole point of an experimental series is each beer has a different hop to it. True. I just, I, I feel like the, the solid base to this beer is a great foundation to build off of and mm -hmm. create variants from there on. Yeah. Uh, I just, I remember the first iteration of Highgate absolutely stunned us. Mm -hmm. uh, it had a coconut flair, though there was no coconut in it. It was all from that experimental <clears throat> hop. Yep. The second one was good and I think reminiscent of the first one to my memory, but I don't remember what that hop was that was in it compared to the first one, if it was the same, like they had mo got more and made another. Or well, what? the 1701B, which was the second one, had Sabro and Citra hops. In and that it. was it? Yeah, it was, okay. that's, that's I, we're on untapped site at this point. I yeah. can't remember the whole flavor profile for the second one. The first one had Citra as well, and it had the HBC 472 hops. Interesting. Okay. In it as well. So it seems like Citra is the base hop yeah. for these beers because they have, they have used Citra in every single version of their Highgate series. And maybe that's maybe that's the base hop that they're using as their base IPA for this beer mm -hmm. because they know Citra doesn't. Um, it's clean and it's 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 hoppy and it's bitter and it's sweet, but at the same time, it's very um, it's easy to mix other hops with. It's, so you can put that in there and then throw another hop in and expect that other mm, hop to shine as well. Interesting. Yeah, it plays nicely, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I actually don't think I ever had the first Highgate because I remember you and DJ, our guest host who yeah. comes on from time to time, were raving about Highgate and how good it was. I think I think you got a couple cans from us both. The very Surely. first Highgate? Surely, yeah. I remember having the second one. I don't I don't remember having the first one, but it could have been I think DJ gave them to you, but we were eating barbecue. And I think we all just probably had them just and, yeah. I probably just never checked it in then. I'm very yeah. I'm very diligent yes. about and religious about checking my beers in but when i'm going back to back to back and i'm oh, eating barbecue man. and all that it is very easy to just forget checking it in and be like i'll just do that later <laughs> yeah when we're barbecuing and we're not checking things and we're yeah. not recording we're having a good time <laughs> speaking of barbecuing we're actually smoking some ribs right now oh, i can't wait man. we got a new we got a couple racks of ribs going on a pellet smoker outside uh so hopefully those are going to turn out nicely um, but this is the first the first time on a brand new smoker, so we don't. Oh uh, yeah. We're not gonna, you know. There's no guarantee it's gonna be a success because this is smoking meat is very methodical mm -hmm. and it's very basic. But when you're in a new environment, you're using new equipment. There's always a chance that things just won't go well. Right. Yeah. It's a 
getting used to the new thing, new mm-hmm. deal, and uh, this is its first saucing. Yep, first <laughs> saucing. So while that's going, we decided we were going to do some a recording today, and we wanted to jump on with Highgate. Mitch went over to Living Waters, downtown mm-hmm. Nashville. I saw him check in the 1701C, the latest Highgate that we're drinking right now on draft. And I was really jealous, and I told him that I wanted this beer, but I, I'm not there to get it. And he came over with a four pack. So yeah. props to you, Mitch. I appreciate it. Barbecue and brews, mm. the best B and B. Maybe that's there you go. Maybe that's a separate section that we end up doing on the podcast: the barbecue and brews mm. pairing. Yeah, that would be really good. It's gonna happen. Yes, I'm about. Probably about done, done with man. this thing. Yeah. yeah. Let's run back down through the summary real quick on this one. Um, nose, very strong. I mean, mm-hmm. the minute we popped it open, we could smell it. Super bright, super clean, very mm-hmm. citrusy. Um, the head retention, the foamy head stayed Yeah. when we poured it. It was beautiful. Yeah. Protein count on point. Tight bubbles. Very tight bubbles. <laughs> Almost looked like a, um, it almost looked like a root beer float, like the the yeah. foamy that sits at the top when you mix the ice cream with the root. Beer. They were very tight. It was very pillowy that that yeah. that head on top. So I was very impressed with that. Um, taste, oh, absolutely blown away. Yeah, um, zesty with orange. Zesty with orange. They say lemon and lime. I, me personally, but that that could be just my developing palate. Uh, lemon, I can get citrus, right. but I don't necessarily equate that to lemon. I don't see Sprite, but I can see Mountain Dew. I could see Mountain Dew and Mellow Yellow, like the yeah. those citrusy drinks. I can see that because they're sweeter mm-hmm. and less carbonated yeah. than something like Sprite would be. That's and that's, to me, what this tastes like. Yeah. It's got the just the right amount of carbonation. It's very juicy, pillowy, and sweet. All around, good beer. Love to have another, have more, and have it on tap. Mm-hmm. You have had it on tap. Mm. <laughs> yeah, You're just rubbing it in at this point. I am, but I meant on tap at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd have it on my personal I'd put tap. that in a kegerator. That'd be awesome. I should probably have elaborated on Maybe that Maybe we point. should check to see if Living Waters <laughs> does kegs that we could take some beer ah, home with us. It'd be awesome. That would be good. Living Waters... You guys are a brewery that I would definitely have on tap in my kegerator at home because every every IPA they put out seems to be phenomenal. I yes. love I love their style. I like their attention to detail, um, and Highgate as their experimental series is no exception. It's fantastic. I look forward to the future with Highgate series. I look forward to 1701D. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what it's gonna be. So God, that's gonna be a fun one. You can make jokes about that <laughs> and and cheers to living waters as part of their high gate. i like that their experimental series you know again not to sound like a broken record but it seems like a lot of breweries are doing this um but i think that living waters is one of those that stand out above the rest because they take a base beer and they're adding experimental hops to it and they're just making it it's completely different. I don't remember what 1701B exactly tasted like, but I know it was way different than what I'm tasting right now because the citra hops were there, but this is a new a new hop blend that mm. I'm not used to having before. So I definitely I definitely see it as a new beer for me. It's delicious and thank you for providing it living waters so I can buy it. And cheers to you. And guys, if you're not drinking beer, start drinking beer. If you are drinking beer, keep drinking beer. And if you never had craft beer before, Highgate, probably a good one to have. I think you'll you'll definitely get a good a good experience out of it. Go check out Living Waters in downtown Nashville and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. We'll be right